Hi, in this lecture, we discuss the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process. It's a very important building block in algorithms and proofs about lattices. In particular, uh, it plays a central role in the uh, LLL uh, reduction technique. The uh, uh, orthogonal and orthonormality is defined up to an inner product. So in the case of a real vector space, an inner product is defined by, I mean, is a bilinear map. So it's a, uh, a map on from V2 to R, uh, which has the following properties. It's linear with respect to the first coordinate. It's symmetric. It has symmetry, which means uh, x dot y is equal to y dot x. And uh, it's positive definite. So it has positive definiteness property, which means that x in a product with itself is always strictly greater than zero, except when x equals zero, in which case it equals to it equals zero. Now, symmetry and linearity imply also linearity with respect to the second coordinate. A uh, canonical example of that, of course, is a traditional dot product where x dot y is just the sum of the x i y i's. From that, we can get a norm. So uh, a norm uh, is uh, defined on elements of V, and it's the square root of the inner product of x by itself. So it's a norm because x, the norm of x equals 0 if and only if x is equal to 0. The multiplication by a scalar lambda means the multiplication of the norm by the absolute value of lambda. And we have a triangular inequality. The latter does not, uh, the, the proof of the latter is not completely trivial. It, depend, it relies on the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. Now, from the norm, we define a Euclidean distance. So, uh, defined from v times v to r. And then given by, uh, so the distance x to y is the absolute, as the norm of x minus y. And so the distance uh, between x and x is zero. So it satisfies the normal um, uh, definition of a distance. So um, every time x is different than y, the distance is greater than zero. Uh, the distance is symmetric. And there is a triangular uh, inequality with distances. Now, um, the Gramsci orthogonalization process uh, consists in creating a uh, basis with a, uh, a special properties with respect to the uh, inner product. So an orthonormal basis, um, so uh, you assume that we have a, a, a just a given basis of V uh, without any special property. Now, if the vectors of a basis are orthogonal, which means that their inner product is zero, uh, uh, then uh, we have a, uh, so we have one of these bases, but then uh, an orthonormal basis, an orthogonal basis, where all the vectors have length one. And so, and it's, that's really what we're going to uh, focus on in this lecture is uh, ways to calculate an orthonormal basis. Now, the, the algorithm that we're going to be using relies a lot on orthogonal projections. So what's an orthogonal projection? Assume you already have an orthonormal basis, then uh, an, orthonormal an orthogonal projection is given by, so maps x to the sum of inner products between the basis vector in x times those basis vector. Now, uh, let's uh, look at an example, very, um, uh, so very straightforward example. So if um, we have, uh, uh, the basis given by uh, 1, 0, and 0, 1, then uh, the orthogonal projection onto this space, uh, V1, which is the span of 1, 0. So here we just have uh, one basis element, V1 equals 1, 0. Then the projection onto uh, V1 is just x uh, inner product with uh, 1, 0 times 1, 0. So that's just x1 0 okay and if we're looking at so we replace this time uh, v by uh, v2 which is the span of this uh, vector uh, 0 1 then what we get is that the projection onto v2 of a given x is x in a product with 
so the one and only one uh, uh, basis vector, which is this time 0, 1 times 0, 1. So that's 0, 2. So we have two examples here of orthogonal projections on very simple uh, kinds of uh, vector spaces. Now, um, one uh, notion that's going to be also uh, very useful for our orthogonalization process is the notion of orthogonal complement. So a subset of V, uh, a vector space, has a complement, orthogonal complement, which is all the, all the x's of V that are orthogonal uh, to every element of V prime. And we can easily verify that this is a vector space. Now, it has the property that it's the direct, so V is a direct sum of V prime and its orthogonal complement. What it means is that each X in V can be written down as the projection of X onto V prime plus the projection of X onto V prime, uh, the orthogonal complement of V prime, and that uh, decomposition is unique. There is no other way to write X as a sum of, element, of an element in V prime and an element of its orthogonal complement. So um, let's uh, work it out again on our previous example. So V prime, let's say, is the span of one zero. And then we have that V prime, uh, the, the orthogonal complement of that V prime is the span of zero one. So whenever we have an X, which is X one, X two, we saw previously the projection onto uh, V prime of X is X one zero the projection onto uh, uh, V prime, ortho uh, the orthogonal complement of V prime is zero X two. And we can see this uh, X is the sum of its projection onto V prime and its projection onto uh, its orthogonal complement. Now let's get to the gram schmidt process. As I said before, given a, a basis of a vector space, uh, the goal of the gram schmidt orthogonalization process is to find another basis of that same vector space that has the property of being orthonormal, okay? So um, well, in, in this is a visual interpretation on base two, uh, sorry, in, in dimension two, uh, we want to turn it, uh, we want to turn our basis into an orthonormal one. So uh, the first steps, so the, pro the whole process is it, an iterative process. So we assume that we've done uh, we found an orthonormal basis uh, v prime one to v prime k of the span of v one v k, and we're looking for the next vector, so uh, a v prime k plus one, such that the span of v prime one to v prime k plus one is the same as the span uh, of v one to v k plus one. So we go one by one. Now for k equals one, it's pretty easy to find an orthonormal basis of the span of v1, all you have to do is scale v1 by its norm in order to get a norm one vector, and then it will span that one dimensional vector space, and it will be orthonormal because it doesn't have any other vector to be orthogonal to, and it has norm one that makes that basis orthonormal. Now, more complicated, now how do we get to uh, the, uh, when, at, when we add another vector? So, now we have v2, and we want to compute v prime two. v prime two is going to be the projection of v two onto the orthogonal complement of v one, where v one is defined as the span of v one, and then all of that, of course, scaled by uh, the norm because we want to make uh, that vector or uh, of, of we want to have it to have norm one, so it's an orthonormal basis. So here we have a visual interpretation. So uh, V2 is projected onto uh, V1. And then uh, here uh, we take its or, uh, the projection onto the orthogonal complement and then we scale it. Now, how do we get the K plus one vector? Um, well, uh, as I said before, we assume that we've worked, we've worked it out until, uh, until the index K. And now the uh, V prime K plus one is going to be uh, by analogy uh, with k equals two. It's the projection onto the orthogonal complement of v sub k of v k plus one, scaled by its norm. Now, uh, the orth uh, projection onto the orthogonal complement is just the identity minus the projection on v k. 
and that is just uh, easier because we have a basis of vk okay it's the v prime one to v prime uh, k so that makes the cal this calculation uh, very easy it's just going to boil down to uh, inner products and with that of course vk plus one so uh, is the span of all the v prime i's until k plus one we do have that v prime k plus one is orthogonal to all the v prime i for i less than k and the norm of v prime k plus one is equal to one that makes that uh, as, uh, basis v prime one to v prime k orthonormal so let's uh, uh, conclude with an example um, so easy uh, in R, uh, in dimension two so we assume that we're given uh, a basis of r2 uh, which is uh, v1 is 1 1 and v2 is 1 2 now uh, the first step is to calculate v prime 1 just by scaling v1 so we divide it by its norm and this is our first uh, basis vector and then the second step is to project v2 onto the orthogonal complement of v1 so to do this we calculate the projection onto v1 uh, by calculating uh, the inner product of v2 by v1 and then uh, calculating this projection by multiplying the um, the inner product by v prime one and then the the projection onto the orthogonal complement is just identity minus this projection we just calculated and that gives us this vector and the last thing we need to do is to scale by the norm and that gives us the second and last base uh, uh, vector basis um, so thank you for listening uh, that was uh, uh, so a um, uh, the orthogonal uh, so the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process, of course, is not limit has doesn't have just uh, applications to Euclidean lattices. Uh, it's, it's defined for for any vector any vector spaces as we just saw. Uh, but as I mentioned before, it's going to play a very important role in uh, Euclidean lattices and lattice-based cryptography. Thank you for listening.